the process or a process to go through to create a website. A design process, a methodology if you will. And it involves starting off defining goals and then sort of getting more and more and more specific until you actually have a prototype and then you complete the prototype and then you have the finished product. So you define the goals, you define the things that are going to set, uh, you define the goals and your audience, you define the things that are going to satisfy or at least address those goals. You define how you are going to break up those various things that are addressing the goals into separate web pages, um, knowing that, they're, that, that, that you could do this any number of different ways for almost any topic. All right. Um, you then start looking at, well, what do I want my individuals to look like on an on a overview level, like uh, 30,000 feet, you know, how is the page going to be laid out? Then finally, we're going to actually make a prototype, so we're going to make some sample pages. And so that's sort of the design process. Last time we talked about visual language, and we, we, we identified things that we have in our toolbox, if you will, all right, or or the 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 the, the what would I want to say? The letters in the language of visual language, if if you want an analogy. But we define the pieces of visual language that we can use to help the user. And what do we want to do? We want to help the user understand the structure or the organization of the page. So that they really they can find stuff on the page. The navigation is clear. Um, the purpose of the page is clear. So we want to help the user visually organize the page. All right. We want the user to understand emphasis, and we want to sort of set the tone for the page. Again, if you remember last time we viewed a kids site and we viewed a news site. And they, they look very much different. Um, and it wouldn't seem right if the new site was done up in the style of the kid's site or the kid's site was done up in the style of the new site. So those are some of the things that we have. Specifically, what are those things that I mentioned? They are typography, which deals with the fonts, the size, whether it's bold, italic, color, and space between the letters. All that stuff could be loosely described as typography. Those are, the, those are the elements of typography. That's one thing that we can do. I mean, you can find some sites that are largely text. And if the typography is done correctly, they can achieve all the goals, even with just elements of typography. And it's a fascinating topic, and it's, it's a topic all in itself. And there, I mean, there's courses, there's full courses on it. Um, kerning and all these terms that, um, depending on whether I have a good day or not, I, sometimes I remember what they mean, sometimes I don't, all right? But all these things put together, that's one of the tools that you have. Another tool that you have is a position of things. And associated with that is the spacing of things. Remember in the news site, there was the manner in which the articles were spaced um, sort of broke it down into sections. So you could see, even again, without knowing the language, it's like, well, that's probably the sports section. This is probably the international news section and so on down the line. So by spacing and grouping and spacing, that's another um, language. By positioning, we'll, we'll call the the bigger word, positioning. All right. Um, a general use of color. We can use that to provide emphasis. We can use that to set a mood. All right. The kids page was very colorful. The, the news page was more, um, more basic. All right. So that's another tool um, 
in our in our uh, quiver of arrows for visual design. I'm trying to think if there is any others that we have. I mean, of course, there's images, but that's that's more content related. There's something else I was thinking. Oh, size. You know, bigger things are considered to be more important. All right. Finally, I'll call, and again, I don't know, there might be like an official name for this, but the law of similarities and differences. Simply put, like things ought to look the same, different things ought to look different. All right. Um, so if you have three articles that are roughly of the same importance, you know, they should look the same if you're not really emphasizing one over the other or there's no difference in kind between the articles. They're all related. They should, they should look the same. Whereas if there's a big difference, they should look different. So for example, maybe the lead story on your page looks different because it's more important and therefore we're going to use size. So we can accomplish a lot of our goals of emphasis, of focus, of organization by a combination of all these different things. All right, there's the things we're trying to achieve and there's the way that we're going to try to achieve it. And this largely is a list of the things that we're going to do to, to try to achieve it. So without further ado, let's go in and let's, I'm going to pick a different hypothetical example from the jazz example to build a prototype from. And we're going to pick it up at the structure part. And I'm going to really quickly uh, um, draw a structure chart for this. In other words, how we're going to divide up the pages. I'm not going to make actual requirements or goals. We could talk about them if we want to, but I, you know, I would think that you have a grip on what what kinds of things that you, you know, what the goals of a restaurant's website would be, and who the clientele would be, and and so on. So I'm going to draw a structure chart of a website. Restaurants pretty, would typically be a pretty small website uh, for a restaurant, like an individual restaurant. A chain restaurant could get more complicated. Um, and then we'll draw a, uh, a skeleton for the pages and then we'll go through the process of creating a template for that skeleton, for that wireframe that we can bring to life and clone and make a bunch of copies of it. All right, so we're going to go with a pretty basic So I'm going to create four pages. And again, we could argue about this. We could maybe make an extra page or we could maybe break down menu into breakfast, dinner, and lunch or whatever, but we're not going to quibble about that, at least not right now. So that is going to be the basic layout of this from a structural viewpoint. In other words, the pages that we're going to create. So our prototype is going to have these pages, but maybe not in their completed form. In other words, I may use Greek text instead of actual text. I may have uh, a, a picture that I take of my Eggo waffles in the morning instead of the actual breakfast waffle that the restaurant actually serves, just to, just to hold place. All right. Again, 
All the parts of the documentation that you provide for design are important, but the prototype is especially important because, again, people, I think, respond to pictures and what the site is actually going to look like a lot better than words. The words are important, too, and the words help you get your thoughts organized and help to communicate ideas, but a lot of times people are going to look at the prototype and come to their judgments that way. All right, what's my wireframe going to look like? I'm going to start with a very simple wireframe. Whereas, if this is a screen, we're going to have a header here. We're going to have our navigation here. We're going to have our content area here. Then we're going to have a footer down here. We're going to start with this very basic wireframe. And we're, we'll, we, might, we might add something to this. And we might later on, later on as we get more proficient in CSS, we might do some stuff. All right? Um, to, to enhance that. But right now, that's kind of what I want this to look like. All right. So let's go in and build our template. Let's start to build our template. Now, our template is going to consist of an HTML file and a CSS file. In this example, because it's a simple example, there's only going to be four pages here. All right. All the pages are going to look the same. There's really no need to have pages look differently. They're all, there's no really real point to make any of the pages look different. So we'll go with just one wireframe for all four pages. So we'll have one HTML document per wireframe and the CSS file per wireframe. Actually, that second part is negotiable, but in this case, we'll keep it simple and we'll have a single CSS file only. All right. We want to make sure we get the common content in our template as good as we can make it. That is, as complete as we can make it. Why? Well, because what we're going to do is we're going to clone this page like four times. I'm going to build a template. It's like building a form letter, right? Dear blank, um, congratulations, you have been accepted for admittance to our university, you know. They don't go and hand type those letters for each student that gets accepted. They have a form letter and just parts of it that are the same, they keep in a template. And the parts that are different are going to be filled in for each particular letter. Now when we look at a wireframe, what is going to be the same and what is going to be different? Which parts of this wireframe are going to be the same on every page? Header the navigation. And probably the footer. I'm thinking of the footer, I'm probably just going to like put the phone number in there or something, you know. Um, copyright, M. Zellers, call, email, whatever. All right? So, three out of four of these sections are going to be the same. All right? And that's good, right? Because when we start cloning this, that means that all we have to do is fill in that blank for the content area. All right, so that's good news. Uh, we don't have to go in and recreate each page as its own thing. All right. However, we do want to be as sure as we can before we start copying this that we get the common content right. All right, because if I'm working on the template and 
I think I'm finished, but then I realize there's something else I wanted to add or um, add to it. If I haven't made the clones of it, all I have to do is change the template. If I have cloned the template and made my four copies of the page, then I have to go in and make the change four different times. And that's more work. We want to keep this simple. So ideally, making a four-page site doesn't take four times as long as making a one-page. All right? Because a certain portion of that is going to be common, and then just a portion of the page is going to be different. All right. But we do want to make sure that we have the HTML in the template that is common to all pages. We want to make sure that that is as correct with as great a degree of assurance as we can. Because once we start cloning then, the cost to make the change is going to be bigger. I'm going to be a little less concerned about the layout. Because if I've done a good job on the layout, I can change the CSS without touching the HTML and get this page to look a lot different. If, for example, and, and we'll, we'll, see, we'll see cases of this, if, for example, I change my mind and decide I want the wireframe to look more like this, where there's a header, nav, content, and footer, if I've done a good job keeping the HTML and the CSS separate, I should only have to change the one CSS file. So the HTML content exists in every page. The CSS, we're going to point to a common file. So if we decide to change it, if we decide to change the color scheme or whatever, then we're not in bad shape. All right. What kind of restaurant should I open? A barbecue joint. That'll work. All right. So, all right. So let's start building the HTML. All right. Go worry about building the HTML first, and go worry about getting that common content in first into. my template before I start cloning it. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting in the basic tags that are in every HTML page. Dot type. I always think it's a good practice whenever I put a start HTML tag to go immediately and put the end HTML tag. You don't know how many pages I have graded where the HTML tag is there and people forget to go back and do that. All right. Does their page work? A lot of times it does. But remember, when you break the rules of language, um, you know, You never know what you're going to end up with. It's like I saw on the web the other day. What did it say? It said something like, I like cooking my dogs and my family. <laughs> Without commas in there, that means totally different than if you put the commas in there, right? So if you break the rules of language, you might end up with a very different result. And Maybe people will understand, and maybe the browser will understand. But you want to be sure. You don't want to think, especially when the stakes are so high as cooking your, your dogs. So we have a head section. And there are typically are very few tags in the head section. There's going to be our title for each page. And there is going to be uh, a link to our HTML. All right, and um, there's a couple files that we'll put in here later on. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do it now. 
but they help with browser compatibility, the Firefox file and the HTML shiv. So we'll, we'll get to those later. We'll forget that. We'll be good and just open it in Google Chrome to start out with. And I know that's not a good assumption, but I want to I get through as, uh, as far as I can with this. All right. Now, we've already defined the main sections of this page. Header, navigation, content, and footer. All right. For most of these, it should be obvious what the HTML tag we're going to use is, right? For the header, it's going to be the header tag. For the nav, it'll be the nav tag. For the content, we could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to make it a section tag. But you can certainly, you could say I'm going to make it an article tag and I'm not going to split hairs about that. And then finally I have a footer at the bottom. So, there's my four basic sections of the wireframe in the HTML. HTML, remember, defines the structure and the content of the page. The CSS defines the appearance of it. So, in the header, I'll do something like this. I could go and I could put a picture in there if I thought I had a picture that I wanted to use or whatever. We'll keep it simple here, you know. You can put any HTML that we've talked about in this class in any of these sections. All right. So we'll go and we'll, we'll do that. All right. If I had a logo, for example, I might put the logo there. The nav. All right. I've already decided what my pages are. Home, menu, about the chef, directions, contact. So, I'm going to make a list of links. Now, a lot of times people do something like this. They'll say, well, on the home page, I want a link to the menu about the chef and contact. On the menu page, I want a link back to home about the chef and contact, and so on. I like it better to keep it consistent and always put all the links on the page, even if it's a link back to the very same page that you're on. All right? So we can visually indicate that you're on that page, but I, like, I don't like when links jump around, where contact used to be the second link in the list, but now it's the third link or something like that. I, I don't like that. I like to keep it consistent. Now, what is navigation? A navigation is an unordered list. 
In other words, I sort of just dream up the order that these belong in. There's not a well-defined order. It's not like I'm ranking the top baseball teams or something like that. So I'm going to define an unordered list. And each list element, each list item, is going to be a link to one of the pages. Here's where it's a good idea to know what your pages are and to come up with a name for them. Because again, I want to get all this part down before I start cloning it. Because after I've cloned it, I'm going to have to go in and make the change to a bunch of different pages. Typically, index.html is a good name for a home page. Many web servers expect that. So I'll call that home. Then I will put my other three links on. And I did not follow my own advice and close my UL immediately, but I did catch it, so I'll do that now. All right. As far as the footer goes, I almost typed in my mobile number there. That would have been interesting. What's my phone number here? Oh, oh, okay, okay, thank you. And again, I could put an email link or whatever in there. Now, for the content, I'm going to want content that is going to pad this out. So, in this case, I'm going to just use um, um, Greek text. So, I'll go and grab a chunk of Greek text and put it in there. I'll grab two paragraphs just for giggles. And I'll put that in here. And if this was actual text, I'd format it more to make it readable. But since I don't really care about this text, I'll just make the two paragraph tags. All right. So let's go and save this. I'm going to call it prototype or template rather dot html. Now this template is never going to make it onto our site. It's going to be sort of the the ancestor of the pages that make it on our site. We're going to take and clone this. And let's go and look at it just to make sure it looks good. on the desktop there. All right, and we have this, which has minimal usage of visual language. 
All right. This is the kind of pages we were doing the very first time, you know, the first pass at this. All right. Stuff is just sort of linear. Starts at the top, it goes down there. There's a little bit of visual language in the fact that the links are um, a different color. They're blue and underlined. The heading is in big letters. But really, we're not doing a lot here to help our user understand the way this is structured or to emphasize these things or whatever. All right. So now we're going to focus on that aspect of it. And this aspect and, and most of the remainder of discussion about this template will surround CSS. All right. And putting in CSS to um, make the page look the way that we want it to. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my CSS file. And I'm going to go and I'm going to create. And I'm just going to set the body text, the body color to a different color. I'm going to use my color scheme generator. What would be a good sort of colors for a barbecue place? Red, orange, brown. I like that. Okay. We could sit and agonize about this, and I'm sure there's consultants that get paid thousands of dollars to come up with the best shades of orange for barbecued places, but um, I'm clicking on that. And I click on something that I absolutely can't see. Oh, color list. All right. So I'm going to make the page, the background of the page, this. We know that this is a shade of orange because red, green, blue. The red's turned up all the way, and there's a little bit of green or blue. So we know it's not pure red. How do we know it's orange? Because the green's turned up more than the blue is. If this was reverse, it would be more of a purpley red. If this is not, it's going to be more of an orange. If, it, if, if the, the green takes precedence over the, the blue, it's going to be more of an uh, 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 orange, uh, orange-ish red. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to just make the color of the text basic black. I'm going to go and save this in the prototype folder. And I'm going to call it style. I'll call it main.css. It's my main style sheet. All right. Now, I'm going to need to go and make sure that I have linked up. my template with my style sheet. So I'll open up Notepad again. I'll open up my template again. And here's where I go into the head and I point to that style sheet. I do that via a link tag. All right. So I'm now pointing to that. It's in the same folder, so all I need to do is specify the name of it, main.css. 
I'll go and save it. And there we go. All right. Yay. Notice how I'm checking a little tiny piece of this at a time. All right. I'm not writing 600 lines of code and testing it. Because the way that this works is if you have one flaw in your CSS file, especially CSS. CSS is a little less forgiving than HTML. And if you have a flaw in it, it's liable to look like nothing's working where you only really have one little problem with it. I guess the same could be said of HTML. It works the same way, that you could have one little flaw in it and it throws everything off. So I'm not going to do the whole thing and wait till I'm done and, and view it. I'm also not going to, or I, I also should, by the way, test this in other browsers. Now in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that today, but you should at this point, as you add a little bit of functionality, go in and do that. All right, so I'm improving my visual language a little bit. I, I, I have colors that maybe look a little more barbecue shop-ish. Yes? Um, I test with whatever browser is on the machine that I am running. All right. So your attempt should be to make it work across all platforms. All right. When I say I'm testing, that I'm doing this just in Chrome, is because today, being the last day before spring break, I'm feeling a little lazy, and I'm not going to put that code in there to, to, to help that. But you should have the code in there to do that, and we definitely will hit that after spring break. Other questions, comments. Now, if you notice from the wireframe, one thing that's kind of bad about this is notice how this stretches out all the way across. Text can be hard to read on a screen all the way across. Your eye can somehow, sometimes, like drift up a line or drift down a line. So you're reading along and your eye kind of moves wrong. So that's why, like in newspapers, newspaper stories don't go across the whole newspaper. Stories go across columns. It's easier to read that way. All right? So, what I want to do, and what my wireframe showed, is I want to leave. Almost like a little frame around there. All right. So let's go and let's do that. Let's leave a little frame around there. All right. How can you do that? You can do that with some HTML attribute, or I'm sorry, CSS attributes that we haven't talked about yet, namely the width. So I can go in and I can say. I want my header to have a width of 400 pixels. Or I could say I want my header to have a width of 50% of the page. We'll do that one. Oops. I went and said with 400 pixels. And that could be good, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to say I want it to be 50% of the page. Because block tags such as headers and so on, If I don't specify, they'll go the full length of the page. And I'm going to make the background color to this. Do we still have our color scheme generator open? 
I'm going to make the background color of the header this. Actually, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to do the same thing for the nav and for the section. And for the footer. I wanted the body to be a different color than these sections so that we can see where these sections end. All right, so I go and I save this. And I go and view it. Now it looks like that. All right. So we're helping a little bit with the readability of it. It isn't, you know, quite as um, hard to read the line going across. But what does look awkward on this is the fact that all the stuff is going in, all the extra space is there. It would be nice if this was, like, centered, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some new attributes in here, and I'm going to say margin 0px auto. I'm going to do that on each of these things. And there we have it centered. All right. Already we're moving in the right direction. We could get even fancier, though, if we wanted to, right? What if we wanted a nice big old picture of some ribs in the background? All right. Let's go and Let's pretend this is what we make. I'm going to save the image in my prototype folder. I'm going to go in my CSS and I'm going to say background, I'm going to change that to say URL, and what was the name of it again? bbqribs.jpg. Actually, again, I should take my own advice and go in and turn on file extensions so that I know that that's the exact name. Save this. And now go and view this. And we have that. All right. Now, interesting thing is we haven't really done tons. Um, how do I want to say it? We haven't really done tons to to uh, you know, to, to style it, but already it's starting to look a lot more like a completed finished website, you know. And we can do even more. The font selection I'm not crazy about. Um, 
the text runs all the way up to the edge of the section. I'm not too crazy about that. The links go vertically. And if you remember on my wireframe, I wanted the links to go horizontally. Let's take care of that one. That will be the last one we'll do. And that way we'll have a reasonable sort of template that we can work on more over um, uh, or after a spring break. So I'm going to go in. Now keep in mind that almost all my work now is going to be in the CSS file. It's probably going to be very rare that I go back to the template, provided I've done a good job putting all the common content into the template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say nav UL I never remember this one. Line item style. I actually do not remember this one, but this provides valuable lesson in being able to find and use the resources. So learn CSS, CSS lists, line style type of none. That'll get rid of the bullet points. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to make the list go horizontally instead of vertically. What do we call elements that stack vertically? Well, columns, yeah, but there's a specific term for HTML elements that stack vertically. Those are block elements. And what are the ones that stack side by side? Those are inline. So effectively what we want to do is we want to change our li tags, which are normally block, to be inline. So I can say nav li display inline. We'll come back to this after break if this is a little confusing to you. I guess the point I'm trying to show is anything about this page that we don't like, we can format it to be the way that we do like it to be. So I don't want that menu stacking vertically. Does that mean it's not in a UL? No, you keep it in a UL. That's still an unordered list but you set the style so that it displays the way that I want it to. So now I go and do this and I get that. I'm probably not quite all the way there yet. All right. I'm not sure I like the blue color. I would definitely want some more spacing between them, but we have to cut it off some, uh, somewhere. All right. So this will be enough for now. I think we've moved quite in a big direction um, to creating a decent template. All right. What we will do next time is we will talk about, after break, is we will talk about enhancing this a little bit more, maybe tweaking the appearance just a little bit more to get this looking good, and then start looking at alternative layouts. Like, what if I didn't want it like this, but I wanted it like this instead? What would I have to do with the style to do this way? All right. So that's where we'll pick up after break. All right. See you up in lab.